White Sox hit four solo home runs today, but it was that doink base hit by Elvis Andrews that won it in the ninth. The Sox lost the lead in the top of the ninth, but they come back and they win it in front of 33,000 ecstatic White Sox fans on the south side this afternoon. It is Subaru White Sox Post Game Live here with one White Sox out further. Mike Huff, I'm Chuck Arfine. I've got this stat I wrote down like five hours ago. I'm like, I wonder if I'll be using this on the show. I wonder if I'll be using this on the show. So when I'm about to say it to you, you'll see why I've been waiting to use it, and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to use it. Last 15 games, the White Sox have scored five or more runs. They're 12 and three. Just score five runs. Yes. You're probably going to win the game. Well, it took the bottom of the ninth for it to happen, but that seems to be like the barrier for the season. You score five runs, you're going to win a whole lot of games, and it happened here today. Well, and we've seen what our pitching staff has been able to do in keeping teams under five runs. They've done an incredible job this year, especially late. It's the offense that needs to get there. And what was nice tonight, I think, was so fun seeing the long ball, but also seeing the small ball, seeing a stolen base, seeing some base hits, especially Andrew Benintendi using the whole field. Hopefully that's the type of thing other players see and start to realize, hey, for the two or three of us, I can go far. Let's go far. But for everybody else, let's get to those line drives. So wins are great. How much better are the walk-off wins? Oh, the walk it's, it's night and day, actually. <laughs> I mean, you, when you win like a 12-2, to 2, when you win an 8-4, to 4, those are always fun. You're going in, you're feeling good. But there's nothing like a bottom of the ninth coming through with a base hit, scoring a guy from second base, a gapper scoring a guy from first base. Because as soon as that ball is hit, everybody is literally out of the dugout, on that top step, screaming at the guy running, go, go. And today it was the exact same thing. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't mind a couple of blowout wins. We haven't had many of those. But you know what? That's, you know, there's all the stress involved, the anxiety, like, are they going to win the game? And boom, in a split second it happens. All right, so how's Chuck feeling? How is Chuck feeling after a thrilling walk-off win here today? Let's see what we got here on the uh, happy meter. I'm clearly happy. I am. How is Chuck feeling? Feeling good. That's all? <laughs> feeling good. That's all. Oh, my uh, gosh. Yeah, the, you know, the, the, I think the Chuck meter is uh, expecting so much more that just a walk-off win at this point isn't good enough? I don't know. I feel much happier than the meter. I think the 4-3 to three would have been feeling good. I think the 5-4 to four should be maybe a little bit higher, I but I think I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm trusting the meter. I don't know. The guy operating the, uh, the meter is uh, out to lunch, apparently, today. I don't know. Jason, was that you? Was it Matt? No one's taken. No accountability. Just silence. Just I know. It's here. gotten real quiet in here all of a sudden. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, they're telling oh, me a lot. There's a lot of words now in my yeah. ear. Okay, okay. I'm just Someone, having... Someone's backpedaling right now is what I'm <laughs> telling you. Someone is definitely doing the backstroke. You know what? Uh, I'm feeling very good, and White Sox fans should be feeling good, especially after a way mm-hmm. the top of the ninth unfolded. Let's show you what happened because the Red Sox stole four bases here today. They can be a monster menace on the base paths. Sox are up four to three. There's two outs. Was that how tough of a play was that for TA there? Really hard. Short hop and a top spin. Very tough, whether you're at short or at second. All right, and then this is a wild pitch from Graveman. So they got a man on third. Justin Turner. This is gonna be a this is in honor of Hawk Harrelson, who I believe is watching the show. A 68 mile an hour duck snort, right? That now. is a duck snort extraordinaire. But with two outs, and you've got one of the fastest guys in your team at second base, as soon as that ball is hit, he is sprinting from second, just like our guy did, so he would have scored regardless. Oh, that is a strike and a half. I would be just as livid as Kurt Graveman right there as the inning continues. Uh, but they uh, got well, out. You of saw it. him say something, and I think the umpire realized, yeah, 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 I can't throw him out because I did make the mistake. And great strike out there from Kendall, who uh, he has been nails in uh, the ninth and nails for the White Sox, uh, certainly coming out of the bullpen with uh, Liam Hendricks out. So we go to the bottom of the ninth. Kenley Jansen uh, makes two easy outs, and you're kind of thinking, is this going to be... Just like Graveman. Yeah. Great pinch hit right here. I'd call this a single, but it is going to be called an Yeah, I call it a single, too, just by the fact that he barreled it up. Granted, he drove it into the ground, but there was incredible topspin. That was right in the sweet spot of the bat. And then watch this second bounce. I mean, there's no way any infielder is going to be able to field that one. All right, so he's on first. Now it's Zach Remillard. He's got some speed, and this catcher for the Red Sox was rusty, and that's not exactly a great throw. No, but a great jump. And again, Jansen, like most closers, bigger step to the plate. 
And we talk about going the opposite way all the time. Don't try to do too much. And that was a great piece of hitting right there. Well, and like Ozzy says all the time, there's a lot of hits around that handle and around the label. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be always on the barrel. That was a great label shot. Just off the hands. Almost broke the bat. Doesn't matter. It was a great swing. Palm up, palm down. Great balance at that point of contact. Drove it nicely into right center. All right. And I just love looking at these guys taking the field and just they're so happy. Yes. Because this has been a grind and a half <laughs> season. There's Elvis. He's been struggling. He actually had a really good week hitting wise. Jimenez is out there. That's just like, yeah. Yeah, I just, it's like looking at this. Happy, happy faces from the White Sox. Well, it's something that we were expecting to see most of the season. Mm -hmm. Something we were hoping to see in April, if not definitely May, the way it started to change, mm -hmm. and then into June. But now, all of a sudden, it's like, we've done this two of the last three days. How do we win on Sunday? How do we make sure that we at least go 500 and then get on a little bit of roll before the All-Star break? Yes, yes, that would be great. All right, so White Sox scored their first four runs on solo home runs, and we've been talking about it. Boy, they're hitting a lot of solo home runs. The Sox said, oh, you think we are? Well, here's four more. <laughs> Blue sky restoration cleanup hitters, bottom of the second. It's Yasmani Grandal facing James Paxton. So this was an interesting thing, and I haven't seen any reason as to why Paxton left the game after four innings, but here's a nice solo homer by Grandal. And a great piece of hitting here. Again, ball center cut, got the barrel out in front, drove it nicely, because this was into the wind, mm -hmm. something that, yeah. again, we saw early a couple balls in center field weren't really going. This one pulled enough, hit well enough, and just far enough. Just far enough. So I was thinking after this, there's not going to be any deep home runs. Like Jake Berger is not going to hit the ball 445 feet into the wind. Oh, no, he is. Yeah, they threw a couple sliders first at bat. This was the first fastball he saw. And he said, thank you. Yeah. So he gets out of a 2-for-27 slump, shaved the mustache, and he does that. Uh, Paxton's now out of the game. So Josh Winkowski comes out of the bullpen. He gave up three home runs. He'd only given up three home runs all season. And he did that here today. And we're going to have to have a little discussion after all these home runs about Berger and the home run hitting contest. But we're running out of time, so let's move ahead to the Sox field. Three to two in the sixth. They hit two more. Now, Luis Robert Jr. looks like it. I'm thinking it's foul because thinking of the, the way he's thing. doing he's that. He's staying there tilting his head. I'm waiting for the fist wave it there. But that was fair by a bunch. I think he just knew. Again, slider that was up in the zone. Made sure it was fair. It was fair. Yeah, by a lot, actually, com compared to the, his reaction. So that's his 19th. That ties the game at three. And then two batters later, Andrew Vaughn goes deep. So 15 of the Sox's last 16 home runs have been solos. So is this good? Is this bad? Does it mean anything to you? It means they are taking advantage of bad pitches when there's nobody on. They're a little bit more relaxed, they're a little bit looser, and they somehow need to take that thought process, that mentality, when there's a guy in first, first and second, first and third. Let's get into that. All, all of those pitches, for the most part, were over the middle of the plate. A little bit of a hanging slider, fastballs, a little bit tailing, but they were center cut. And these guys, we know if the ball's in the middle of the plate, they're going to drive it. I want to see that framework when there's guys on base because I yeah. feel like they start to expand too much and we've seen them swinging at balls on the corners and off the plates. It really is a mindset, and this game is so mental because oh, when so there's a mental. man on second, man on third, the pressure is not on the hitter, no, it's, it's on, on the, the pitcher. pitcher. But when you are in a stretch of not doing well with runners in scoring position, can that get in your head? And all of a sudden, you put all this extra pressure on yourself that doesn't need to be there. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. You said it very well. I mean, this is when the pitchers start to get really nervous because now they put a couple guys on, and all they get to be a little bit tighter. For the hitter, again, if you're winning, if you've got guys behind you that you're trusting, if you know things are going to go your way, if you have that positive frame of mind, you somehow can relax, breathe, and wait for him to throw that one over the middle of the plate because you know you're going to hit it. He can't throw three there. He's got to get at least one. You've got to make sure it's a good swing. All right, so it looks like Luis Robert Jr. is probably going to make the All-Star team yes. for the White Sox. I, I have a message for Major League Baseball. If you're watching MLB, there's another guy who needs to go to the All-Star game. His name is Jake Berger. Home run derby. Make it happen, Major League Baseball. He's got 17 home runs. He's tied for 12th with Jordan Alvarez and Adolis Garcia. Please, Seattle bound. 
Jake Berger for the home run hitting contest. That would be very fun. I think we'd all love to see Jake because we know in batting practice, it's an exhibition. I mean, we've got three or four guys, but Jake, when he makes contact, it sounds a little bit different when it comes off his bat. Yes, and that was a nice homer here today. Uh, so it's funny because we're talking about all these home runs. There's one guy who's not hitting home runs. He's doing those little things consistently, and it's Andrew Benatendi. Since moving to the leadoff spot, he's batting 419, 13 for 31. Got two, actually, no, three hits today, all singles, but this is what you want to see, just getting on base. And going the opposite way. I mean, not trying to pull the ball, not trying to necessarily hit the long ball, just saying, how do I get on? How do I keep the next guy coming up? How do I put pressure on the other team? How do I get a pitch count up? Yeah. And again, he's coming through the zone. Very nice. Great balance. Two of those three hits were off tough lefties. Yeah. Again, so point. that's what I like to see is that when you have that tough lefty coming in, and we know Murphy's done really well. You know how good Paxson was today. Still kept that front shoulder in, kept the hands coming through the zone nicely. Nice line drives. Yeah. So uh, Ben Attendee uh, doing the job from the leadoff spot. Uh, meanwhile, Lance Lynn. So we all remember last weekend he tied the White Sox franchise record with 16 strikeouts. And we're wondering... Will his success continue? Not saying is he going to get 16 strikeouts again, but is this going to be trending in that same direction? And sure enough, it is. Uh, here's the field coverage pitch and recap brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. He gives up three runs. Two of them came on one pitch, the two-run homer uh, by Tristan Casas, but seven strikeouts, one walk. Paxson was dealing one run, two hits, four innings, 63 pitches. We haven't gotten a word yet as to why they pulled him, but... I'm not complaining. Yeah, did. Uh, what did you see from Lynn here today? Well, what I saw was what we saw a lot of out in Seattle. Throwing strikes with different pitches, having a lot of movement, and kind of working backwards and forwards. That one walk came in his last inning. The yeah. home run came in his second to last batter. So up until that point, through five, he was doing everything we thought. Seven strikeouts, no walk, only three hits, four hits. So. I like the fact that he's now been able to put two of these back to back. And when he gave up that home run, we saw the intensity that is Lance Lynn. And you see the sweeping, these sweeping pitches, the oh, yeah. movement. He, it wasn't like that before. I think in the last. There's the one walk. Yeah, well, here comes the home and run. And then watch him. Yeah. <laughs> it was almost more fun. Chuck and I were like, let's see this again, but not even worry about the batter. Let's watch Lance. Because you knew. Watch him, folks. Uh, oh! Yeah, you can't can, believe I threw that slider where I threw that slider. You knew he was close to 100 pitches. He knew this was his last inning. Yeah. And he had pitched so well and gave his team a chance to win again. And just, you, you got to tip your cap sometimes. Yeah, you, you, could, you saw what he did. You could hear what he said. Yes. Um, not for all audiences, but uh, that was... Uh, it was definitely R-rated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gets a no decision, but... Uh, Put the White Sox in position to win the yes. game, uh, and that's uh, always great when you get that from your starter, and the starters have been really, really good. Going to break here on White Sox Post Game Live. When we come back, we're going to hear from Pedro Grafol on this thrilling win. Sox take it, another walk-off winner, Elvis Andrews, with the game-winning hit in the bottom of the ninth. Mike and I are coming right back.